In this video, we're going to take a look at a fairly straightforward case. This is a 73-year-old gentleman who was referred by his dentist to me for removal of uh, the root of tooth number 29. Uh, the uh, tooth had a, a PFM crown on it that broke off about a week previously, and the dentist determined that it was not restorable, so he referred him for extraction. Uh, you'll take a look in a, we'll take a look in a second, and you'll see why he was referred. This patient is... Uh, uh, basically healthy, but he's on some hydrochlorothiazide for, for some mild hypertension. He's also taking aspirin, uh, 81 milligrams per day. So when we take a look at this clinically, what we see there is that there is not any tooth structure above the gum line. It's all a all subgingival, and radiographically you can see why the dentist referred this to me for removal. Uh, we've got the residual root of tooth number 29 in the bone. Uh, it's a root canal tooth, uh, which is going to make the root more brittle. It's, you know, root canal was done about 15 years ago. In addition, if we look at the periodontal ligament space around the tooth, we see that it's either very thin or almost non-existent. And so there's a good chance that this tooth is probably ankylosed. Uh, there's also a little periapical radiolucency, and you can also see I uh, got a percha point that was actually introduced through a fistulous tract on the buckle that is going right to this area of radiolucency on the mesial aspect of the root. So most likely this tooth is fractured too. The root is fractured. And so removal is not going to be very easy. So a lot of techniques developed over the years, including atraumatic instruments such as uh, proximators, uh, periotomes, luxators, in an attempt to remove teeth as atraumatically as possible. And so, uh, you know, these, these techniques work pretty well, but sometimes even still we would have a tooth where no matter what hand instrument we used, uh, we had to get out our surgical hand piece in order to facilitate removal. So to, um, traditionally what we do is we take a 701 burr or a thin fissure burr and trough around the root uh, to make some more space between the uh, root and the alveolar bone. Well, some newer instruments, some newer technology has allowed us to do things a little bit even more uh, atraumatically, and that's the use of uh, piezo surgery. And so uh, we're going to introduce in uh, this video the use of the piezotome cube uh, in order to use as atraumatic a technique as possible to remove the uh, remaining root from tooth number 29. Clinically, we can see that there is nothing above the gingiva. We're going to go ahead and give local anesthetic by infiltrating some 4% articane uh, into the vestibule on the buccal aspect of the alveolar ridge and do the same on the lingual. After giving a couple minutes for that to take effect, I'm going to take a number 15 scalpel blade and make a sulcular incision mesially and distally as well as on the buccal and lingual to separate the gingival mucosa from the tooth. The next question, of course, is how are we going to separate the root from the alveolar bone? And in order to accomplish this, we're going to use our piezotome cube. This is essentially an ultrasonic device that has multiple different uh, tips we can place in it that vibrate at ultrasonic speed, which are designed to cut hard tissues, uh, but to spare soft tissues in the process. So I use it quite frequently for bony surgery, such as sinus lifts, ridge splits, and for harvesting bone for augmentation. In this case, we're going to be making use of the periotome tip, which as you can see, looks very similar to a periotome. It's got uh, beveled edges on the f leading and on the backside, as well as at the tip. And this is used to sever the periodontal ligament circumferentially around the root in order to facilitate atraumatic removal of what remains of the tooth. So following our incision, we're going to take this peritome tip and we're going to enter into the space between the root and the alveolar bone on the mesial aspect and uh, drag it uh, perpendicular to the root, so buccal lingual or lingual buccal, whichever you prefer, on the mesial side of the root. And each time we're going to pass a little bit deeper. And then I'm going to do the same on the distal aspect of the root again. Um, going between the root into the PDL space and going perpendicular to the root in a buccal lingual direction, uh, each time passing just a little bit deeper uh, to accentuate that space. Uh, once I've got this begun, then I'm going to change uh, my tact a little bit and I'm going to go back onto the mesial aspect of the root. And rather than going buccal lingual, I'm going to go superficial to deep. So I'm going to deepen the uh, separation of the PDL and do that in a couple different spots and then again connect those buccal lingually uh, with buccal lingual strokes. Uh, again do the same on the distal aspect of the root so that each 
pass. I'm going a little bit deeper along the root, a little further towards the apex, and then connecting uh, those uh, uh, cuts. So again, we're going to go on the mesial aspect, and we're going deeper and deeper with each pass. And then we can come in with our spade proximator uh, from Carl Schumacher Instruments and use this to uh, luxate the root or begin to luxate the root within the alveolus by entering that into the PDL space and giving it kind of a rocking motion and trying to get it a little deeper. Uh, so if we didn't get much movement, we're going to go back to the uh, piezotome, and we're going to accentuate our separation of the periodontal ligament space on the mesial aspect again, uh, going deeper and passing in a buccolingual direction with the tip. The idea being this is also going to widen the periodontal ligament space. Um, we're going to uh, repeat this again on the distal aspect and uh, again make sure that we've uh, gone deeper than we had previously. And then what we can do is we can take that uh, piezotome tip and try to do the same on the lingual aspect of the root and we're going to start superficial and then go deeper and uh, now try to uh, luxate the root again with the proximator and we can see when we do this we're getting just a little bit of early movement but not as much as we'd like. We're going to do the same on the distal aspect down the PDL space and then come back with the piezotome and start superficially on the facial and then go deeper with each pass. Uh, so now we're, we're deepening uh, the uh, separation of the periodontal ligament uh, completely around the root. Now we can put in our proximator and we notice we've got significantly uh, more movement of the root and so we can take our proximator tip and move that towards the apex of the, of the root which will displace it more to the point that now we can come in with our forceps and easily and atraumatically remove that root from the socket and we can see that it's completely clean. Now we're going to go in and debride out the socket, thoroughly curette it with our curved curette, irrigate with sterile saline, and then uh, once we've done this we're going to take some gel foam and place it into the socket because this patient is on aspirin so we want to put some gel foam to help with postoperative clotting and then we're going to put a single uh, 3-0 gut suture in place to hold that packing in place. And so I'm going to take my gut suture and I'm going to start on the lingual aspect, go from the inside of the socket towards the outside on the, on the lingual and then come back on the facial. And the reason I go from the inside to the outside is so that when the needle is passed through the mucosa, if we were to go from the outside to inside, we'd be displacing that gel foam. Um, which I don't want to do. In, th in this instance, what we're doing is we're actually kind of pulling it down a little bit more. So now we've got uh, our figure eight suture completed uh, with the gel foam in place. We're going to go ahead and th put in uh, three throws and cut our suture, and we are now done. So postoperatively, the patient uh, was just given a prescription for uh, tramadol, 50 milligrams, uh, one or two every six hours needed for pain, but told uh, he should really take some ibuprofen uh, and or some acetaminophen a uh, uh, first, and then the tramadol as a backup. Um, he was also given a prescription for chlorhexidine oral rinse, which he used twice a day for about two weeks. He came back for follow-up um, at uh, one week, and the site was healing well. He had uh, minimal discomfort afterwards, only took uh, the acetaminophen, and had no issues with bleeding afterwards. So, hope you learned a little bit from this video. You saw a new technique using the piezotome cube with the peritome tip in order to atraumatically remove a tooth. Uh, it's a great piece of technology that we use in the office all the time. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me. Um, of course, my email is j at onlineoralsurgery.com. And I look forward to hearing from you and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Mm -hmm.